All are right, live? folks, we are live. I'm gonna Welcome. Move this over. We're talking ear, ear ache. Well, I'm not in the video, but uh, ear ache, ear infection. infection. Sometimes it's related to teething. Yeah, drainage. Oh. All um, the congestion allergies. and stuffiness yeah. with you or your kid. Yeah, let's start. Uh, today we're gonna show you physically how to do drainage on each other but you can also do this on kids of all ages. And the biggest thing to remember with all of this is that your kid can be on antibiotics, you can be on antibiotics, and you still wanna do drainage because the reality is that even when you kill bacteria, you still have fluids sitting there harboring or having the potential to harbor more bacteria. It's why so many kids end up on multiple sets of antibiotics because the fluid is still just sitting there. Um, Important to remember too, if you're doing antibiotics and, and doing all this drainage, make sure that you're still using probiotics and keeping your gut flora healthy, especially for little kids, because they can't, I mean, it's hard to get the foods in them that have that kind of culture, and you're not gonna find anything really that has the billions of bacteria that you need um, in, you know, in an actual probiotic. So, and we'll dive into that more too, but just a reminder, because I brought up antibiotics right off the bat, um, make sure you're doing that, keep their systems up, and then drainage. Um, and to remember too that their ears are kind of straight out, or their tubes. Um, kids' tubes are flat, they don't drain. And as we get older, they angle down and, and they drain into our system better and they clear. It's why, again, kids get way more of the ear infections than, <laughs> than we do as adults. Uh, where do we want to go next? I feel like you did a great intro. Yeah. They, <laughs> they know what they, an ear infection is, so yeah, that infection builds up because the fluid's sitting there. So do we just want to start with all of our random techniques that we have in our I think toolbox? So. We are chiropractors, uh, in case you're just <laughs> hopping on here and, and you don't know our background. We're chiropractors, and so the biggest thing that we're working on every day is the biomechanics of the body you know, anatomy and physiology, we're really looking at the way the body is equipped for movement and that plays into ear. And the funny thing is too, ears have those three little bones, those ossicles. Mm -hmm. uh, we even go and adjust ears, which actually we should show that. Uh, it, it helps with drainage, which is really cool because again, our whole thing here is drainage, drainage, drainage. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna get close. Can I adjust somebody's ear? Yeah. yeah. So you, you could certainly do this at home. It's different with kids than it is with adults. So with adults, you actually want to go down and out. So almost like a J, like a whoosh. Um, so you go down and out, and it's going to help move that tube and create drainage. And then with a kiddo, it's more of a straight, here, maybe angle your head down. There you go. It's like a straight pull out and typically when you do that to a kid, they are going to tell you it feels really good. I mean, if they're mm -hmm. itty bitties, they can't talk to you, but if you were to do it to yourself, it's gonna feel good. It's gonna open everything up in there. And again, just create some movement, but it can even create kind of a pop. And the, that's what you're hearing are those three little bones kind of moving in there uh, when you go in and quickly move through it. So when we adjust it, I probably, I didn't show that fast, but if you were to do it in, if we were to do it in here with a patient, it's gonna be a quick, Kind of a whoop. Um, and I just brought my earring off. I did that. <laughs> yeah, easier to do without but, earrings. But yeah, yeah, easier to do without earrings. Um, but that's the idea with the movement in your ear. Um, one of the big things that we do in here is the interoral, the inside your mouth, we can drain your sinuses and your ears that way. Um, I feel like the trick with kids is starting young because <laughs> they know if something's going to make them feel better, they get used to it and they will start asking for it. My kids ask for it now. They are nine and 11, and I will tell you at two, they did not like it uh, at all, mm -hmm. even younger. I, but then they get to the age where they're like, no, and they'll bite down and they want nothing to do with it. Yeah. And the thing you have to remember is that A, you're the parent. B, you're doing this for their own good. <laughs> you're not hurting them. And C, there will come a time when they understand that it really does take a lot of the pressure off and it feels really good. 
Um, so not to quit when you go and do this once and they don't like it, uh, it's it's a practice <laughs> that, that can take a decade, which it did for me and my kids. So. Absolutely, and you can make it fun. Um, sometimes I tell kids that I just have to tickle the top of their mouth or we're gonna create rainbows in your mouth. And Aww. typically it's th they that. like that. Um, I've only gotten a bit few times, just if they're teething, watch out, they are sharp. Um, I'm using gloves on Dr. Jesse here. If it's your own kid, just make sure your hands are clean or of course go get some gloves. But if you have clean hands, I would. Get to. No, I do it with my hands. Yeah. It exactly. gets a little slimy. But... Say, you could even do this on yourself. It just takes a little bit of practice. Maybe we'll do a solo one. Oh, too. yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, do you want to get closer? Wants, yeah. Who, yeah. Wants, who wants to drink? Okay. Right for it. <laughs> okay. okay. That's yeah. perfect positioning. So I'm going to talk through it as we go. What I like to do, especially with kids, but it kind of helps with moms because we never know what the gag reflex is going to be like. You're going to follow the teeth line back and then you're going to go to the roof of the mouth. When the hard palate gets squishy, that's where your pressure is. And you do three rainbow sweeps out. Thank you. I like to give them um, a break in between. I do one, two, three, break. Then we go back in. This is usually where the two-year-old's like, yeah, I know what you're going to go do, and I'm not going to let you do it again. But that is more of the sinus, because our sinuses live here. The ear, you're just going to go take that rainbow further out to the gums behind the teeth swoop it down and almost immediately you'll notice like a mm -hmm. patient yeah, or yeah. a pediatric person mm -hmm. like yeah it's sweat like it's draining for sure and it's pretty common if they cough after yes. you get this done too because that's all draining down their neck and so they kind of cough a little bit yes i'm just going to say if you if you kind of trigger that gag reflex especially in infants just back up let them recover and mm -hmm. go back in do it again and with toddlers too that are teething, you can even go like on the side of the mouth. So if they're clenching, just sneak in on the side and then dive in to the back. Oh, that's so that's a yeah, good that's tip. I really good tip. Never, never go in straight on if they have teeth. No, <laughs> they will. I mean, it still hurts, but um, yeah. We also then will throw some at home kind of tips and tricks at you. And my most favorite, now to each their own, right? This is. If you're comfortable with it, go for it. If you're not, you need to do your own research. We have a kid-friendly um, tea tree oil, and this is something we use externally behind the ear. So you can put some drops of tea tree oil behind the ear. I also like to follow the jawline. Um, I personally will use thieves on myself as well. Um, maybe you have a little oregano oil. Just understand that sometimes these are really potent. They have a very strong smell as well. So maybe this is something you put on your kiddo just after they fall asleep at night so they're not touching it and then putting that in their mouth as well. But um, you might get some funny faces from them if that's something you decide. This is just going to help kind of dry up um, and hopefully help reduce that inflammation, also infection, right? Because we're talking tea tree, oregano, et cetera, just being naturally antimicrobial, bacterial, um, and so forth. So mm -hmm. keep up with that. So um, do you want to show them what those in the air? Yes. Okay, we have a couple different options. Um, I guess, Jess, do you want to show them the garlic mulin first? We have garlic mulin. So it's just like one drop in the ear, and it's antibacterial. So it'll help with anything that's kind of like growing or anything like that. Um, it's kind of potent as well, so just be mindful that it's pretty garlicky. So, yeah, nap time or right before bed's great yeah. for ears because yeah. you do kind of have to have them laying. If you have them laying on one side, you put it in the down ear and it will go down into their ear. And yeah, like you said, antimicrobial to help yeah. with that infection. Then pending the age of your kiddo, you could rip off a little bit of a cotton ball if they'll tolerate it, not take it out and put it in their mouth. So again, pending their age, but that'll just help prevent it from leaking out of the ear. Um, an alternative to that's that. That's just the mule and the olive oil. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Another brand we really like is Earthly Wellness, you guys. Oh, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, earthly wellness so this maybe just has a few less ingredients in comparison to that garlic mulin there is still mulin and then just olive oil in here as well um, again to help decrease that inflammation and infection um, what else do we have okay as dr. Jesse was talking about the adjusting of the ear um, I also think about you know, if there's fluid in there, you probably experience this yourself as well, congestion or your ear feeling plugged or full. Um, 
we want to help create a little pressure change. So this is just a little silicone cup. By the way, you can find all of this on our Amazon storefront, so check that out. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so take a cup of water, heat it up in the microwave however you wish. Maybe you have a tea kettle. Um, but the silicone cup is really nice to then bring to your child's ear. What we're looking for is for that water to be steaming hot. Pour it in the silicone cup because this won't be hot. Bring it as close as you can to their ear to help create a pressure change. Or of course, let the hot water run in the shower. That's actually an old school trick that my mom used to do on the airplane. It's a flight attendant trick. So with the pressure changes when you fly with kids, yes. uh, they will. the flight attendants used to bring out cups of hot water <laughs> to change yeah. the pressure I love that. in the ears. And literally the other day, my husband I, I had, well, I'm going to show you. I was using my mister, and uh, I just blow my nose after, and I, I don't have anything going on right now at all. I just do it preventatively, but it changed the pressure in my ear, and I was, like, freaking out. He goes, use your coffee. <laughs> so I literally put my ear over my hot coffee, and sure enough, the pressure changed, and I, I had relief, but it, it can be that quick for kids, which is super cool. Um, I guess I'll talk about my mist. Uh, so I'm actually not a fan of the neti pot. I might be singular in this. Um, no, we're shaking our head over here. I'm terrified uh, to use it, that's all. Oh, I, I, so mm -hmm. I've actually had really bad experiences getting more infections from them, but it's probably because when I've used them, I've wanted to use them throughout the day, and I'll use like sink water, which don't do because it's not sterilized and it can harbor you know, its own version, variation of bacteria, and it's just kind of a mess. So it's not super accessible throughout the day. It's not something you can do consistently. And I think when it comes to ears, and we've talked a lot about this, it's all about consistency. So like parents will even do the drainage stuff once and be like, I did it. Well, no, you, you have to do it like every hour. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where you have to be really consistent with this stuff. And I feel the same way about misting. So this is a um, nasal mist. This one has aloe. I do like it with the aloe. It doesn't have to though, but it's saline. It's just salt water, but it's, you know, sterilized. And because it mists, you just literally mist it up. Check this out. <laughs> um, it's quite lovely. And what it does then is it, it kind of clears out the cavity. So it's not pushing anything out, but what it does is it, it coats the cavernous cavity, I mean, that's what it is. It's a cave in there and it's covered in pretty thick mucus typically if you're feeling the congestion, right? Like even if you're draining, um, you're usually draining the really um, watery based kind of stuff where the thick stuff is gonna get stuck up in your sinuses, same for kids, right? And so if you were to use this, not only is it antimicrobial, which we love salt for those kinds of reasons, but it's going to dry it out and it's going to also, with that fluid in there, it's gonna physically kick it off the, the siding, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And so you'll get even more drainage and clearing out of the whole area. And I grabbed my ear because, again, what I noticed the other day when I did this, I, I again, am trying to do it preventatively because we're gonna leave on a flight in like two days and I do not wanna get sick and I don't want anything congested. Um, but when I did it, I just simply blew my nose because I had water in it and my ear pressure changed so much. And it's such a good reminder how interconnected those two are, especially when you're not hurting. I, I even forget like how truly interconnected they are just even in relation to our daily movement because we all are kind of carrying a certain amount of fluid. In fact, uh, three years ago, I had some pretty severe vertigo and um, I actually, it got so bad because I, I had done some maneuvers to try to fix it. There's a maneuver called Dick's Hall Pike and Epley's. And I tried some things, I, it wasn't going away, and I went in for an MRI and the MRI showed fluid. So I had so much fluid in my ears, no infection, but I had so much fluid that it was, it was making me dizzy in certain positions. And I think it's just a really good reminder that you know, you should probably do some form of drainage or clearing almost daily and, and to really hydrate. Because like here in the state that we live in, which is Minnesota, in the winter, it gets super, super dry. Mm -hmm. And if you're, if you're not creating moisture in that upper respiratory system, you're actually going to create more mucus. 
And so if you were to even just do this once a day preventatively, I mean, quite honestly, you probably would have many, I mean, you'd have fewer incidents of sinus infection or, or earache or anything like that, probably even upper respiratory, like coughing, hacking stuff, because of course it's dripping down your throat, which sounds so gross. Um, with that, that that's humidifiers, that's mm -hmm. humidifiers, because we're talking like dry air and moist and um, this year we all have humidifiers in our treatment rooms and it has been a total game changer because we don't get that dry crusty weird yeah. sickness that everyone else gets and we treat sick um, kids all day so it was necessary um, we actually told one of our office workers could not get rid of her kids sinus infection we made her take it home one night overnight just like that child's, so child's doing so much better yeah it does matter I believe like the goal it should be like 30 to 50 yeah, percent I say 80. 60 but that yeah. is like rainforest yeah. <laughs> so that's what it is like right. going it for is it. like a rainforest no higher than 60 it is like a rainforest yeah it's, it's kind of lovely though yeah it um, is it makes you warm it ends up it, it gets warm in here when I yeah. the fires are going yeah. so I guess if you can't have it in your office space I think like just bedrooms for your kids would be yeah definitely huge. for sleep Overnight. yeah well, like even when we turn them on in here in the mornings, not as much now, it's starting to get a little more humid as the weather warms up, but um, a lot of mornings when we turn the humidifiers on, they're at like 21%. That's low. I mean, that's that's making your system work. Um, so it's it's been good for us this year. It's the first time we've ever done this, um, but it's a good reminder for families. And, you know, it, or even if you're traveling, I just told a patient this today because she's traveling to Cincinnati, she's 31 weeks pregnant, and um, and I would say this with kids too, but you can ask for a humidifier at the hotel, and they won't always have them, but they often will. And so if you um, trial that, that can be really beneficial. Um, the other thing I was gonna say in regard to that, oh, I am traveling, I said in two days, I bought, okay, so it's, it's a mister kinda like this, but it has a, um, a mask on it like a nebulizer and it's still just saline but I got it it's coming tomorrow so I'll have it for the flight I am literally gonna make my kids do this to inhale the saline because it's going to lubricate like yes. like hydrate moisture or moisten moisture moisten their lung tissue their throat their nose it gets everything it's not just the mister where you're clearing out the water like it, it gets into your whole system and I'm so excited about it. I have had this, we've had this on our storefront forever and I, I haven't purchased it for my family and I'm super excited for, to, or to have this because I notice how dry things get when we travel. And so I'm very excited to have this for our trip. Fingers crossed. Sounds amazing. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Yeah, I wish I, I just got back off a of flight and I needed this. <laughs> I had chapped lips. I was yeah. like all raspy. I couldn't get enough water. It just felt Icky, I didn't have my spray. It's, I know, you need you need your spray. I need your spray. Uh, it just stays in my purse. That <laughs> actually reminds me though, so hydration also is part of this. And I don't think, like we've all gotten really good at it. We had a, a retreat back in the fall and we talked a lot about electrolytes. And like it was just, it was just in passing, like we were just having conversation. And since then, I feel like a lot of us have been really cognizant of drinking electrolytes, which can be tough to get for your kids. Um, but you can make it playful. Like we use LMNT in here because it's not super sweet. It doesn't have a lot of sugar in it or it doesn't really have sugar in it, um, which we love. But you know, the potassium, the magnesium and the sodium, not table salt. We have to always clear this up. Not Different. table salt, mineral salt. So it's, you know, really keeping your cells very hydrated. Um, but that's going to help again with ear infections. Like that's going to be huge. Coconut oil is a good way to do it. Cream of tartar, you can put a half a teaspoon in any liquid. That's going to be your potassium. Um, what else? Uh, Google it. Google it. Google the foods. Oh, like yeah. bananas. Yeah. If your kids yeah, like broccoli, yeah. I don't know anything. It yeah. just... Or even, well, not related to food, but um, I bought some liquid IV yesterday at CVS and it was an immunity liquid IV. So it wasn't as sweet, um, but it had all of the electrolytes and then some, which was really cool. And then the nice thing about liquid IV is it actually has a ton of vitamin B in it. Not a ton, but it has some. Yeah. So that's kind of nice. Um, but those things keep you super hydrated and are super good for you. Um, and that leads me into the nebulizer. <laughs> we just have so many things. Try it. Yeah. Uh, should I stop talking? No. No. 
<laughs> there are options. So, well, you were yeah. going to talk about the colloidal yeah. silver. So with which your I feel like, nebulizer, you can put your like saline solution in there as well, but you can also drop in a little bit of the colloidal silver because it's antibacterial, antifungal, and just like nebulize that into your system. How much would you put like ratio wise? Tablespoon? To a cup? Yeah. You can't really get, yeah. like, and you can also just ingest it too. Like, you can just take a spoon and just, like, ingest it. It has zero taste, so your children are not going to freak out that it's, like, super gross because it literally has zero taste. It doesn't even taste like water. Like, it's just nothing. Unlike so, oregano. Oregano tastes awful. Yeah, oregano's yeah. bad news. Yeah. So, I mean, it's awesome, but it's, it's awesome. But, like, but you can't really get too much colloidal silver unless you're... Drinking the whole bottle. Yeah, 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 which I wouldn't which do. Which you won't but, like, do, but... Well, and I think too, when you, like when you're saying to add it to your water, I think the thing to make very clear is you, you gotta boil down your water if you're not using water that is, you know, distilled or, or sterilized elsewhere. Um, again, mistake I made when the kids were little, I just wasn't even thinking of it. I just, water is water to me. I seriously, like that didn't even occur to me, even being in this profession and knowing all these things, it didn't even occur to me. I just was, you know, trying to do the best I could. And, um, Reminder to, to boil that stuff down because it'll make a difference and then and then add the colloidal silver mm -hmm. um, To the mix or you can add a salt base like a, a mineral base would be better, but um, You could, that's when you can add it so sterilize it first then add it and then if, if anybody doesn't understand what a nebulizer is It's a machine that basically has like a little mask attached to a tube and then there's a little bit of like water just a tiny amount um, at the base and it literally creates a vapor that then goes into the mask and, and you just inhale it. It's awesome. So it's not actually a lot um, of liquid, but it makes such a huge difference. And I think people think that you can only use a nebulizer for steroids. Like if your mm -hmm. um, doctor prescribes you like a little, um, what are those, what's like inhalers? In an inhaler, no, but like the little vial, vial albuterol. Oh, albuterol. That's it. So the little vial of albuterol, yes. people are, you know, you'll get prescribed that. And I think I've had a lot of people talk about that being uh, them thinking that's the only way you use a nebulizer. Yeah. And it's not. You can use it for a lot of things. And for us in here, it's you know the anti antibacterial, antifungal, um, and then the moisturizing component to it, which is so cool. It's so cool. That was a lot. I have oh one my gosh. gosh. One more thing. I oh, love too. it. Do it. Go you do too. You go. <laughs> Going back to the very beginning, talking about drainage. If you just cannot get your hand in your child's mouth, you can still help them externally by massaging. Uh, oh my right, right. The uh, eustachian tube or the auditory tube that connects, that drains your ear into your nasal passages sits right in their cheeks. So just massage from their nose outward. I say everything's like up, out, and down. Our lymphatic system drains just above our clavicles, so make sure to spend a lot of time from behind the ear just massaging right down their neck. You're going to activate those cervical lymph nodes, cervical mm -hmm. being your, the spine of, in your neck, um, and you can still get drainage that way. Yeah, I can't believe we didn't. I can't believe it. That, just like, yeah, that was like, that's one of the biggest things we do in here. Important. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the other thing though, maybe the last thing, I don't know, we might keep throwing things at you, but, um, Sudafed and we had a kind of a conversation before hopping on here live. Like, do we say it? Do we not? Cause we don't prescribe medication. We, um, we don't get heavy into the medical side of things that way, or, you know, medication or drugs, the side, well, that sounds so extreme, but we, we, that's not our role. Um, again, we're dealing with more of the biomechanics and kind of the natural side of things. But at the end of the day, we're all about getting the effect, getting the result, get using things that work. Like we're pretty moderate around here. We want things that work. So again, even if you're on antibiotics, we want you doing all these other natural things so that you can combine them and get the best result. Sudafed is a player in that because it dries things out so much. And even when I was, or when my kids were little, I didn't know that Sudafed existed for kids. And it does, you have to get it behind the counter from a pharmacist, but it does exist. And it is one of the things that really dries things out. So if you have a kid that is full of mucus and you just cannot clear it, even with the drainage and all the moisture and all the stuff you're doing, um, that's at least another option to entertain. Look into it, definitely do your research, but 
that's something that people don't even realize. So I think it's good to know when you're at your wit's end and your, your kid is in a ton of pain and you've already gotten tubes for your kid and the tubes still aren't working and you gotta get a second set of tubes and there's still pus Ooh. coming out of their ear and you still gotta dry things out and you don't know what to do. Like, it's just good to know that that's a possibility for you if, you know, if you're even interested in entertaining that, but that's something that physically dries out the nasal passages. So um, just something to consider on top of everything else that you know we've talked about here. Um, anything else? No? You let us know what else <laughs> you need, what else you wanna hear. Or if you have any like really cool tips that you've tried at home and you're like, oh, this yeah. is my go-to, leave it in a comment or reach out to us. Um, we're basically everywhere. Yeah. Very easy to get a hold of. So yeah. we'd love to hear from the community on here. Yes, we would. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. That was fun. Okay. If only I knew how to end this one.